Welcome also from, from my behalf. I'm Taneli Vaskelainen, working as uh, an assistant professor here uh, in the Copernicus Institute of Sustainable uh, Development. Um, and I'm going to present a paper of the corporate cooptation process in the German car sharing market. Uh, it's a paper uh, I'm uh, co-authoring with uh, Mario Silta and Nina Granquist, and we've uh, uh, submitted it to uh, Journal of Management Studies special issue on, on the sharing economy. I will be talking more about the sharing economy than, than the platform economy, but to, to sort of link it to, to Kuhn's presentation, I'm going to talk quite a lot about the tensions between the communities and corporations, which cause, cause, because as you may know, like communities were much like the pioneers in the sharing economy in, in many ways. There are these tensions in, in the market, so I think it sort of links to the platform economy that way as well. My agenda is very classic, um, sort of uh, academic presentation uh, agenda, so I will present the motivation, then the data methodology pretty shortly, then I focus on the results and, and sort of give some, some cues for, for the discussion. Uh, I suppose it's, it's, a, it's a given that it's good to, to sort of uh, postpone the, the questions to the end because the slots are pretty, pretty, pretty short. Okay, so uh, starting with the mo motivation. Um, usually social movement organizations are sort of created to oppose status quo some, somehow. And therefore they uh, include, well, not counter-political elements, but counter-cultural elements, some, somehow sort of to, to oppose something or to preserve something. And uh, therefore, usually like uh, a thing that um, these, these social movements are afraid of is the corporate cooptation. That the corporations come, they steal their thunder, they steal their spotlight, uh, and sort of commoditize their, their, um, their countercultural counter elements and just remove the radical elements and pick and choose the things they want. I think this is what happened to punk. There is a very good book about, book about that. Uh, so, so sort of like change it in a way that leaves the mission as, aside. And the sharing co economy has been argued to have been co-opted by corporations. There is a recent paper by, by Martin that actually like sharing economy originally posed as a, a pathway to a more sustainable society has been sort of framed as just a business opportunity. So this is sort of the frame from where I, I start uh, to look at then the German car sharing market. Uh, the first thing to know about uh, the German car sharing market, there are actually like three business mo models, but I've been looking at two in particular because uh, these are the sort of the corporations and the social movement. So, so you have the station-based car sharing where sort of the cars ha have a home base where you, uh, uh, like after, after your trip, you always return it to the same place. And then you have free floating or one-way car sharing when you can make one-way trips within a, a constrained city area. And, and sort of what you see in your left-hand side, the, the, the station-based car sharing, it is being run by small entrepreneurial companies that stem from a social movement that started in Germany in the end of 80s to reduce the private automobility, whereas uh, free floating uh, car sharing is uh, organized by corporation spin-offs, uh, Car2Go and DriveNow in particular, there are two big ones. Uh, Car2Go is a spin-off of, uh, of Daimler and, and Europe Car, and DriveNow is a spin-off of Sixth and BMW. So, uh, and, and of course, like to, to study whether a corporate, a corporation cooptation is a like valid phenomenon, uh, I, I first started to look uh, whether there are, there are cues of this happening. Well, first, this, this uh, graph presents the sort of number of mentions of different kinds of organization in my press data, which I will uh, present shortly. And what you see here is basically, yes, the free-floating organizations have more or less stolen the thunder from the station-based organizations. They are sort of becoming the, the, the prototype. If, if there is a, um, an article talking about car sharing, you can be sure that there are the, the free floaters are mentioned, but not necessarily the station-based organizations. So they are sort of be becoming the prototype of, of the, the service founded by the station-based organizations. And they are, sorry, they are, oh, oh I, I don't have it here, but they are sort of um, removing the radical elements. So, so uh, like, the thing that the, station, uh, the, the, the social movement organization has emphasized is that they want to 
uh, lead to behavioral changes. They want to teach people to give up their own cars, drive, drive their cars less. And the first thing that Robert Henrich, the, the, the CEO of Car2Go, the, the spin-off of Daimler on Europe Car, said was like, well, uh, Car2Go has nothing to do with renouncement, nothing to do with giving up. So, so they are so, sort of like just offering a service for people who already want to give up their own car. So I started to look at this, and uh, my main source of data was three batches of archival data, each uh, about 200 documents, press releases of both the corporation spin-offs and the SMO organizations, and newspaper articles from two weekly newspapers in Germany, Der Spiegel and Die Zeit. Uh, I complemented this data with books on car sharing to, to sort of understand the history of the social movements, and also interviews to sort of explain the, the phenomena that I would, or, or like the, the findings that I would uh, see in, in, uh, in the archival data. I'm very sorry that my analysis section is only this part, but I do have three extra slides of, of data and methodology. Should you be interested just to keep it in the slot, I will focus on the results. So basically, I use categorical studies to, to, to see like categorical cues, how, how, how the different stakeholder groups, uh, the media, corporations and SMOs understood uh, the car, car sharing category, uh, uh, sort of track, track the changes within the car sharing category and then with the interview data with uh, different data cues explained how this, this, this change happens. Okay, but then going to the results, uh, we developed a, a four-stage um, uh, process model, uh, starting with SMO e emergence, followed by SMO pushing the mainstream, then the corporations coming and sort of like a hype around the phenomenon starting, and then uh, le it leading to the corporate cooptation. And I, I will now go through each of these stages with illustrative uh, quotes of what's going to happen. So first, SMO emergence. Uh, like um, car sharing uh, social movement organization, as said, started very sort of, uh, started from the radical idea that there are too many cars and we just have to get rid of them. And, and there are like quotations like this where they want to associate cars, car ownership with stupidity. So they really wanted to get, get rid, of, rid of the cars. And you know, like there were um, actually like terms that you had to give up your car before you joined. You had to show that you had given up the car. So it wasn't just a nice alternative, it was the alternative sort of for, for, for the car. And at this point, media uh, reports, reported of the SMO organization as, as uh, uh, like a social movement. So, so basically they said, yeah, this is nice, this is actually a good idea, but this, is, this will never mainstream because the Germans love their cars. And sort of the SMO started to understand that if we stick to this, this position, we will never mainstream. We will never push to the mainstream because people are just not ready for this, this kind of a thing. And they started uh, in the second, when they started, they, they wanted to really like, like um, uh, mainstream their, their, their uh, ideal. They started to emphasize uh, very consciously their um, practical side. It's flexible, it's nice, it's convenient, and in, inexpensive alternative to the private car. And the media really took this story. So, so media started to, to, to present car sharing as a great business. And also, like, the media started to speculate, well, like, why do people own a car? Because these are actually pretty, pretty darn convenient. They are much cheaper. You, ha you see all, uh, many, like, um, cost uh, comparisons, like, even with a small car compared to uh, car sharing, and, and, and like, uh, statements that 20% of the Germans actually would say by, by moving to car sharing. So, so this, this, this practicality um, narrative really flew. However, then in 2008, car to go comes to the pic picture, and actually, like the social movement organizations, feel, feels threatened. What it does, it's, it sort of shoves car to go away from the car sharing category. It says this is not car to, car sharing because it is not in line with the, the original mission that founded the car sharing. However, uh, at this point, what we see is. Uh, the media articles like uh, growing tenfold and the media sort of sticks to the, the uh, previous narrative of uh, car, car sharing be, being an alter, nice alter, alternative to, um, to a private car 
And, and what happens then is that media sort of pushes the, the uh, incumbents to the car sharing category, even though uh, the uh, um, corporations themselves resisted. So, so this, is, uh, this is a number of mentions in the, the press releases of Car2Go of what it calls itself. And what you see is, first, uh, it starts to call itself a sexy mobility concept, new flexible mobility concept in, the, in an urban space. And it says, car sharing is old fashioned, it's, it's like a thing of a past, it's way too un inflexible. Uh, then, uh, as actually like the, the press really doesn't resonate, it, it starts to call itself a fl fully flexible car rental system for urban areas. A very G German term, this is directly <laughs> translated, but it's actually like, I think the, the main thing is car rental. So, so it calls itself a short-term car rental service, but it really doesn't stick. So it, eventually it goes from sort of like free floating or flexible car sharing service to just calling itself a car sharing service and these are the two two terms that it uses so the car rental was ramped down so so what we see is that in the in the, the hype um, phase of the cooptation uh, process actually it's the media that pushes the different actors to this this sort of countercultural category or the ca to the category that started as a countercultural phenomenon finally the corporations accept it um, so, so basically, this is a quotation from Cartago. It says that it's the most successful car sharing company. They strategically demarcate themselves as sort of the prototype in the, in the category. And the SMO, this is, this is from an interview, SMO starts to sort of pushing back, uh, pulling back to their, their original position of uh, being an environmental car sharing company. So, so they have this, this environmental certificate, their Blaue Engel, uh, that, that they have, and they sort of have, again, not, start, not anymore so much focusing on the practical elements, but on the, um, on the um, environmental elements. Okay, we, our, our paper makes three, three main contributions. This, this is my second to last slide. Uh, so we first time present the corporate cooptation process of an, uh, as a social movement organization initiated category. I think this is a co uh, contribution as and of itself because uh, social movements are usually seen as out being outside of the markets, not as being part of the markets. The second thing is that the social movement itself sows the seed by wanting to mainstream the sort of easy cooptation because once the, 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 the category that they create becomes sort of a practical, a nice thing, part of the mainstream, it is very easy to, to, to see other similar services as, as car sharing as well. And finally, it, it was the media and not the corporation, corporations that pushed the free floaters in the car sharing category. So, so in this sort of a hyped situation, media actually makes active meaning making work in, in sort of creating these categories. Okay, you might ask, so what I did? Um, so basically, I, I think the, the, the key uh, takeaway is this. The social movement that try to change markets from within, they face a tough choice. Either they hold on to their countercultural position of, of, of radicalism, of actually like creating a change, or uh, then, uh, in this case, they stay in the margins, but they control the meaning-making systems, or they push to the mainstream, but then they uh, sort of emphasize the acceptable aspects of, of the product or services, but then corporate cooptation happens really easily. And as it loses the power to define the market category, it is likely that the corporations will take the spotlight. In, in, I think in car sharing, the, the, the sort of like uh, the end of the story is pretty happy because it has been shown that the co corporate uh, car, car sharing services are sort of pro-environmental as well, but this is not necessarily the case. Yet usually people stick to the original sort of lay or, or understanding of, of the category. So it has the, the pro-environmental legitimacy, but not necessarily the effects once the corporations step in. Okay, that's what I, all I have to say, so I'll be, be happy to take your questions.